We all have different needs from our laptops, but one that's increasing a lot these days is content creation, whether that's video editing, 3D rendering, programming, or photography. If you're doing any of this stuff professionally, or even just as a serious hobby, you're gonna need a powerful laptop that can actually do that work. And that means a high core count processor, a discrete graphics card, and maybe even a really color accurate display. All that stuff is hard to find in one place. But my friends, this is the new XPS 15 that we're reviewing today, and I think it just might have all of that in one package. If you're familiar with the XPS 15, the 2019 model doesn't really have any surprises in terms of the look. This is actually the fourth iteration of this same design they've been using since 2015. Still uses the combination of aluminum on the lid and the bottom for that strong sense of rigidity, and then the black carbon fiber on the keyboard deck. Not only does the carbon fiber look great, it also keeps things really clean, at least compared to like a glossy plastic or even like the soft touch matte black of the Razer Blade, which Honestly, you get fingerprints on it within minutes of taking it out of the box. So even though it's getting a little familiar at this point, I still like this design a lot. I mean, those thin bezels around the display still look great. You know, Dell's always been an industry leader in terms of that. And this time around, they've even gone through the effort of shrinking down the webcam to fit it above the screen. That was, you know, the biggest complaint about this laptop and the XPS 13 over the years was that you had the nose cam underneath the display, that's all taken care of this time without growing the bezel much at all on the top, and that's really cool. A couple small things to mention about the design of the XPS 15 versus the new XPS 13 is that you don't get the new color options, so you don't get that frost white that they use on the XPS 13 that I actually really like. I wish they had brought that over to the 15-inch model. And then also the hinge. Um, it's still really difficult to open. That was something they fixed on the XPS 13, but this is something that requires two hands, unfortunately. So while that keeps the screen from wobbling, it does make it kind of inconvenient. But in 2019, it's really all about the screen on the XPS 15. Of course, you can still get the standard 1080p LED model, but what we've got here is the brand new OLED 4K screen courtesy of Samsung's AMOLED panels. And not only is this the best of these new OLED laptops that have this exact same panel. It's also the straight up best laptop screen we've ever tested. Now you might be wondering what I mean by that since all these laptops that use OLED panels this year come from the exact same manufacturer, Samsung, and it's this exact same panel actually. So shouldn't they be the same? Well, yes, but the implementation and the calibration of these panels varies wildly from system to system. So, so far I've tested the Razer Blades OLED as well as the Alienware M15's OLED and the XPS 15 is by far the best of the three. It's less saturated and bold, and it's a whole lot less reflective. Even though it's still a glossy panel, the other ones are actually crazy reflective, and I found myself staring back at myself a lot less on the XPS 15. And unlike those screens, the XPS 15 is really, really color accurate because they tone down some of that boldness and saturation. It supports the widest color gamut possible with a laptop screen with 100% on sRGB and Adobe RGB. And obviously the contrast is just wild because of how deep those blacks are with OLED. It is definitely a little bit warmer than a MacBook Pro screen, but in the end, it's a screen that you can trust with your edits. So whether you're a photographer or a video editor, that's a really important consideration to make when you're going out and buying a laptop. Another really important consideration for people in those fields are ports, and fortunately the XPS 15 still has a lot of them. So you have the option of two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, a USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port, and most importantly, a full-size SD card slot, which is gonna be really helpful, again, if you're in that field and you need to throw some video or images onto a laptop quickly. Now let's talk about performance because there's been some confusion out there about what exactly the XPS 15 is trying to be and what it is not. And let me just say this very clearly, this is not a gaming laptop and you should not go into the purchase of the XPS 15 thinking that it is. I mean, the 4K screen locked at 60 Hertz should tell you that alone. It does have a decent discrete graphics card option, the GTX 1650, which is better than the previous generations. But honestly, in games, you're still gonna be needing to reduce settings down to medium, and that's at 1080p, of course, just to get some decent frame rates. And that's because of how this laptop was built, the size of it, 
and because of how the system throttles performance. So sure, do some gaming on the side with this, that'll totally work for this laptop, but if you go into buying this thing as a dedicated gaming machine, you're gonna be pretty disappointed. What it is good at, in fact, what it's really, really good at is video editing. Our unit comes with the ninth gen, eight core Core i9 processor and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And seriously, this thing can blow through Premiere renders so fast, way faster than you ever thought a laptop probably could. So I did my typical test, a two minute clip rendered at 4K in ProRes 422 in Premiere. And just listen to the results that you get across these different machines. So on the 2019 MacBook Pro that came with that same Core i9 processor, it took this render 10 and a half minutes on a 2019 Razer Blade, which comes with a six core processor, but a better graphics card, down to nine and a half minutes. But check this out, with the XPF 15, and whatever they're doing with the cooling here, and the entire system working, it's down to just under five minutes. Now, if you're running that MacBook Pro with Final Cut, you might see some different results there, but in this particular scenario, I was super impressed and it totally blew away my expectations about what this laptop would be able to do. We also tried some video encoding and handbrake and the XPS 15 was 15% faster than the MacBook Pro. Again, same processors there. In fact, this was the fastest score we've ever seen on a laptop outside of the Alienware Area 51M, which is a huge gaming laptop that has a desktop processor and weighs eight and a half pounds. So still really impressive. Now battery life isn't this laptop's greatest strength. Obviously it's got a 4K screen, so you know that's gonna limit what it can do. But honestly, it's still got six to seven hours in moderate to light usage, and that's pretty good. And you can still get the LED 1080p version, which historically has been one of the best performers in terms of battery life. So if you're specifically a video editor, I can highly recommend the XPS 15 in this particular configuration with the OLED screen and the Core i9 processor. Now, if you don't wanna spend $2,500 on a laptop, cause that's what this costs, you can of course jump down to the $1,100 base model, but really that's not a laptop for content creation because it comes with just a quad core processor and you have to rely on those integrated graphics. But jumping up to some of those more powerful configurations, you can go from the Core i7 to the Core i9 or from the 1080p to the 4K for $300 in either case. So if you need to bring the price down to like $2,200, you can totally do the eight core processor with the worst screen if you don't need those like really precise colors or vice versa, you can do six cores with a 4K screen. Either way, you're getting a really powerful laptop and in either case, you're getting 32 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of SSD storage that you can go up to two terabytes if you really need it. I mean, if you price a MacBook Pro at a similar configuration in terms of specs, it's gonna be $1,000 more expensive. So if you're comparing those two apples to apples, you can obviously see the value you get if you go with the XPS 15. Now, there is a possibility that next year we could get a totally new design from Dell. I mean, this is on its fourth iteration after all. But if you're in the market right now, if you're looking for a laptop that you can use for content creation, the XPS 15 really is the best option you can get. Hey, thanks for checking out this review. Leave us a comment below about what you think about the XPS 15. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer some. And also make sure to check out this video review of the MacBook Pro from earlier this year if you wanna see how these laptops compare a little bit more.